Good evening and welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibuo. I'm one of the English ministry pastors at Sarang Nanum Community Church in Ambler, Pennsylvania. I welcome you to this evening's program and I'd like to invite you to pray with me together in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We praise you because of who you are. We know, Father, that truly all things work together for good to those who love you, Lord and those who are called according to your purpose, Father. And each and every one of us who are listening at this moment, Father, wherever we are in life, whichever part of the world we are in, your servant prays and we believe that we are all called according to the purpose that you have placed in our lives for us, Father. Thank you for loving us the way we are. Thank you for giving us a second chance, Father. We know, Lord, as we live this life, we are living every day because of your love, because of your grace. We thank you, we open our hearts, we are ready to learn and to be better, God, as a human being, as a father, a child, and a husband and a wife, a worker, a teacher, as a musician, artist, or wherever we are and whatever we do. May it all glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. I'm very happy to be able to share with you this evening the word of the Lord, and this evening's Sermon is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 10 to 20. I will read that with the ESV version. You're welcome to follow along with me. You're welcome at home to open your Bibles as well and read along with me. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on a foundation which with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple, that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you think that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Amen. The book of 1 Corinthians, as well as 2 Corinthians, it was written, actually, they're letters written by Paul, the Apostle Paul, to the people in Corinth. And the people in Corinth were really talented people. They were people who really had a lot of things going in their life. Many of them were really wise, smart, and they had great resources available for them. Perhaps many of them came in from prominent families as well. However, the thing is this. The people in Corinth, they were not perfect. They made mistakes. And so much so that Paul had to be very stern. The Apostle Paul in his letters, especially the people of Corinth, had to really teach them what they ought to do and what they should not do as well. And we can see today, even in the year 2020, that even people in the ministry, they slip up, they make mistakes. That people really think that they can be in the ministry and just do whatever they're doing and think that, okay, you know what, I'm coming to church, I'm doing this and that, and whatever I'm doing outside of the church, no one knows about it, so what, I'll just do it. However, here's the thing, God sees and God knows. Because we are that temple, the temple 
of the Lord, owned by the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is in us, the Holy Spirit. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So before you do anything with your body, to your body, think about it. It's what it is that you're going to do. Will it benefit yourself? And most importantly, would the Lord, would the Holy Spirit be happy by what you're about to do? True, you might say, well, what I'm doing, I'm not hurting anyone. Why should anybody care? I'm only doing it towards myself. But that's not the point. The point is, you have been bought with a price. That is the blood of Jesus Christ. The sacrifice that he had done on the cross really was so precious to the point that we can never afford it on our own. Many people think they are wise. Many people, it's true, they may have a bachelor's, master's, doctorate degree, they may be a professor, they may know a lot of things in this age. However, no matter how accomplished we are in life, we should always remember our brain comes from the Lord and the breath we have in us comes from the Lord. And the thing is, we might think we know a lot of things, but if you think about it, we only know a little bit. We can plan for tomorrow, but what if God calls us home tomorrow? We can plan for the next hour and a half even. We want to do this and that, have this meeting and that meeting, but then the Lord has the final say. We don't. Because we don't know, because we are not perfect, then every day we shall do our best to do the will of the Lord. Doing the will of the Lord, it's true, it's not easy. However, if we choose to obey, it will become easier as it comes. Let it be that what we read in the Bible, we will put into practice. If we would read the Bible and put into practice the words that are written in it, if what we hear on the sermons on Sundays and on even this YouTube channel, we hear it and we put it into practice, can you imagine there will be more marriages that will be blessed more children blessed. There will be less and less strife and problems at home. People will have more peace living with you and living around you and your presence in the midst of others, especially those who don't know Jesus Christ, will be a presence that will bring positive impact. I also am not perfect, but I always want to make sure that I would live my life as according to the word of the Lord, that what I hear, I put into practice. Of course, no one can say, I have done it all, I have not missed a single one. But here's the thing, there's a difference between a person who's really doing his best, aiming towards the Lord Jesus, having their eyes fixed on Jesus, and as they walk, perhaps they stumble, but they quickly get back up and run to Jesus, run to the cross. There's that kind of people, but there are people who, as they walk, they know the truth, they stumble, but then they choose to keep stumbling because of their own flesh. It might be any kind of sin. Lying, cheating. It could be sexual immorality. It could be anything else. However, we want to learn one thing, my brothers and my sisters. Our Lord Jesus had taught us that while we live in this world, there will be the wheat and the weeds. You can read it in the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew teaches us a lot about that, that us, God's children, the true weeds, not the weeds, W-E-E-D-S, we are the ones that till the end, we will be saved. But the weeds, they are, they are the ones that will, throughout all the process, they will stay and they will be with the Lord till the end of age. But the problem was that the weeds, W-E-E-D-S, in the book of Matthew chapter 13, are the ones that sprang forth among the wits because the enemy, the devil, had planted them. 
But here's the interesting thing. Our God will not differentiate or will not plug out the weeds, W-E-E-D-S, until the end of times. Till the end of age where everything will be all opened up there. The weeds will be thrown to the fire while the good ones, the weeds, W-H-E-A-T-S, they will be the one that will be saved. The question is, which one are we? Which one are you? I'm not here to judge anyone and we shouldn't be judging others as well because the Bible said that there's only one lawgiver who is the judge. That is our God. And who are you to judge your neighbor? Is what the Bible says. And that's why I'm not here to judge anyone to say who's, who's who. However, our main focus should be that in our lives, we should always have our mind fixed on Jesus, our heart fixed on Jesus, and that so that in the end of the, day, the days when the Lord Jesus comes again for the second time, or when He calls us home, we could stand before the Lord and the Lord will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. This year, I will be turning 31. Last year, I turned 30. Last year was the year 2019 and this year's the year 2020. And when I turned 30, I said to myself, you know, actually, I am happy to celebrate my birthday, but the reality had struck me in my heart that it's true. Actually, every year that I would celebrate my birthday, I'm one step closer, one year closer, or even one day closer to coming home, to my eternal home. My prayer is that each and every one of us would have the eternity in mind, that we would not let the troubles of this world, the discouragements of this world, and the temptation of this world to lure us, to grab us. No one's perfect, but we can make a decision to pay the price to live right before God. Because when we live right before God in due time, in the right time, the Lord will exalt us. When we are humble, living life one day at a time, putting into practice, the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul himself who wrote the letter to the Corinthians, he was not a perfect person. He made mistakes. He actually was the one who okayed the, the death of Stephen. Stephen in the book of Acts was thrown with stones till he died. Paul, at the time his name was Saul. It wasn't changed yet. He hadn't had the encounter with Lord Jesus yet. At that time, he was there. He didn't stop it. He let it happen. Paul could have just allowed his past to stop him. But here's the thing. Once he made a difference, once he choose, chose to live differently, he never once came back again to his old life. So my question to you is, if you have been truly saved, if the Lord Jesus has saved your life, then never ever look back again. Keep moving forward. I would like to close with this. It is said in verse 19 and 20 of the book of Corinthians chapter 3. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. The thoughts of the wise. If there's any of us who thinks that we are Mr. and Miss Know-it-all, let's think again. Actually, we are not. God is the one who knows it all. However, it is true. The Lord reveals things to us in part. Because the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, the secret things belong to the Lord. As Christians, perhaps we do not have the answer to all of the world's problems. As Christians, maybe we cannot answer all the things, all the questions that the world has given us. However, we know one thing for sure. Just like 
the woman who was a sinner in the book of Luke, which Jesus said that she was saved by her faith, let it be that we will continue to live by faith and know that we will be saved, that we are saved because of our faith, though we cannot see, but we believe through the lives of the people that has been changed. The peace that God has given in our hearts, that God, Jesus Christ, is Lord of all. My prayer is, is that every day we would look at ourselves in the mirror and say, I am God's good creation. Temple, where the Holy Spirit lives in. And let us, before making any decision, before any words come out of our mouth, think again, is what I'm about to say, is it a blessing or is it a curse? Will it make the Holy Spirit happy? Or will it make God, the Holy Spirit, sorrowful? Let's think about the actions that we're about to take. Maybe right now you're thinking about doing something, you know it's wrong, but you really want to do it. Do not do it. Or perhaps you've been doing something that you know is not right. You know you should stop. Don't say, I will stop tomorrow. Stop today. Or perhaps you feel that I should do something right now, but you feel, no, maybe I should do it tomorrow. I will tell you right now, do not wait till tomorrow. Do, do it right now. Do not delay. Because the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Don't harden your hearts. As you hear the voice comes out of my mouth, I pray that the words from the Bible that I have preached, the word of the Lord, will touch your hearts. Because the Bible says the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, bone and marrow. And it knows the thoughts, the discernment of one's mind. With that, never forget, every day, read the Bible. If you feel like you have no time, at least one day, read one Bible verse. Do not skip. One Bible first in the morning, one Bible first at night. And as time goes on, keep on going and read some more. And the word of the Lord will change your life, will change your marriage, will change your business, will change your mind so in order so that your mind be renewed, your heart renewed, and your life renewed as well. If you feel like you have no hope today, lift up your hand and I will pray for you. If you have never received Lord Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, lift up your hand. I will pray for you as well. If you are sick tonight, lift up your hands. I will pray as well in the name of Jesus. Father, right now, first of all, I pray for anyone, Lord, who is sick, Lord. If anyone is ill, Father, Lord Jesus, by your blood, be healed, Father. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Father, if anyone here, Lord, has a broken heart, Father, in Jesus' name, touch their hearts, God. Lord God, I pray right now, if there's anyone who is, Father, right now, thinking to themselves like they have no hope, I pray in Jesus' name, Father, touch their hearts right now, God. Send people into their life, Lord, to remind them how much you love them. Father, if anyone here have never made a decision to accept you as their Lord and Savior, I would like to pray for them right now. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, would you pray this prayer with me? Because once you pray the prayer, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is, God has, been, has raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be safe. So will you please pray with, with me this prayer? Lord Jesus, come into my heart, O God. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Amen. Father, for anyone who has prayed that prayer, I pray, Lord. May you send them people, Lord, who love them, who will encourage them in their journey of faith. And right now, O oh God, as I'm about to close, I pray, Father, so that anyone who's listening to this message, may their lives be changed. May no one stay the same anymore, Father. In the name of Jesus, God's people say, Amen. God bless you, and I will see you next week in Good News Internet Broadcasting.